strength, Emi here, and I am plugged in. First made available in 1880, electric plugs allow machines to connect to the public electrical circuit. There are now about 20 different types around the world. This has led to a global coordination of technical standards, as well as the creation of multi-standard sockets. Even with all these different types of electric plugs, they all have one thing in common. They connect electrical equipment to the public electricity grid. Just like how your internet co connects you to the public supply of information. But how can we use the internet safely? To help teach about internet safety, we've broken it down into three main categories. Informational safety, physical safety, and mental safety. Let's start with informational safety. What exactly is it? Well, if you've made a purchase, applied for a job, or signed up for a service on the internet, then you've encountered information that could lead back to your personal information and identity. That sounds scary, but don't worry. Most of the time, this information is always protected by passwords. However, some people have come up with sneaky ways to work around this and steal your information. One of the most common ones is scams. Internet scams are schemes that aim to take advantage of internet users by pretending to be something they're not. They cheat the user out of personal property through the use of deceptions so that they voluntarily give their information away, rather than having it stolen from them. Now some of these may be pretty easy to spot, but others are much more dangerous. Take phishing, for example. Phishing is where scammers disguise themselves as trustworthy sources in an attempt to obtain private information. This can be taken in the form of a website that's nearly identical to its counterpoint, often through a link in an email. Phishing is usually a much more believable form of information taking than scamming, hence they're higher risk. I want to be rich. Hmm, what would that be like? Delivery? For me? Then we'll reinvest the earnings into foreign currency accounts with compounding interest and it's gone. Malware and computer viruses are also something to be aware of while browsing the internet. Malware and viruses are malicious software, either disguised as something they're not, or made to be something completely invisible to the user. Their danger can range anywhere from slowing down your computer to, to stealing your personal information right from under your nose. They can be found everywhere, and many people don't even notice when they've contracted one. They can be found through downloading of software from malicious sites, online ads, and disguised as links. There are two solutions that make internet browsing much safer. First would be to install Adblocker so that you can't access any risky ads. Next would be to install a credible internet security software. No, not you. Finally, greater awareness overall of where you're browsing and the credibility of your software should minimize the risk of coming across these dangers. Using the internet can also lead to dangerous physical situations. While you may not give your home address out on social media, there are other ways someone can find your physical location. Doing things like posting your location on Instagram, Facebook, or Snapchat can leave you open for this threat. There are also ways of people obtaining your location information on some portable devices such as tablets, phones, or laptops that connect to the internet. There are some actions that can be taken to prevent the internet blocker from finding your location. On social media, it's best to make sure you keep posts to a minimum and do not post any real-time information. It's also best to keep social media accounts on private to prevent anyone you don't know from contacting you. Thirdly, it's a really good idea to keep up-to-date on your software and regularly put in updates. This is because whenever a company does update their software, they're usually trying to patch vulnerabilities in the software. 
Finally, the computer's IP address is something you should keep hidden by using a virtual private network, or VPN for short. In any case where cyberstalking does occur, you should first block the person responsible, then report them on the platform being used, and finally, in the worst case scenario, call the police. Addiction is defined as a psychological and physical condition in which a person cannot stop carrying a particular activity which impedes their daily life. Addiction can interfere with friendship, school, work, and mental welfare. Internet addiction come in many forms, such as compulsive shopping. Oh boy, here I go shopping again! Really? Only one handy horse? Ugh, I get it. Excessive internet gaming. Hey dude, let's go to the movies today. God, dude, I'm busy playing games. You've been playing candy cars for days. You can't even pass the first level. Shut up, Todd. <laughs> and gambling. Oh, come on, number forty, number forty. I bet on you. Come on. Daddy needs new shoes. Come on, come on. Wait, wait, wait. Number thirty-nine. Number thirty-nine. <laughs> Addiction can be prevented by limiting time spent on the internet, taking up hobbies, or giving yourself hands-on projects who don't require electronics. In all seriousness, internet addiction is a serious and debilitating disease. If you or someone you know is struggling with internet addiction, there is a national helpline with a number provided below. Now, we've talked a little bit about posting on social media platforms such as Facebook, Instagram, or Snapchat. And with these sites being used by over a third of the entire world, it's almost impossible to ignore their massive influence in different aspects of society. However, with such powerful platforms comes the need for a certain level of responsibility from its users, which if ignored, can prove to be quite harmful ones with mental health. Your site is more about this. So like Amy mentioned, it's quite clear that these social media platforms have become an integral part of our everyday lives and are growing bigger with each day. Now, the problem is, as social media continues to grow at an exponential rate, it's also detrimentally affecting people's mental health. Social media provides immediate rewards with very little to almost no effort needed. And therefore, our brains start craving for more and more of these uh, stimulations for neurological excitement, which is quite literally how every drug addict's story begins. Now, every time a social media user hops on their favorite platforms to talk about themselves, it triggers a release of dopamine, the feel-good chemical, in, in the reward centers of the brain. More likes, more comments, more shares. We all love that attention, right? What's even funnier is that the voter turnout in the U.S. is only 55%, whereas almost 80% of the U.S. population has a social media profile. But now let me tell you about the three biggest stressors on social media that, if go unchecked, can seriously affect your mental health and safety. Number one, the highlight reel. People are using social media platforms uh, as their personal highlight reels where they're sharing content, looking their best, and living their best lives. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that. The problem starts with how others perceive um, all the social media content. We simply assume that this is how they live their lives 24-7, and we never stop comparing ourselves with them. And don't get me wrong, this was happening way before social media, but it was only amongst the most famous of celebrities. And now all you need to be a celebrity is, is your phone and some good lighting. And the highlights are all that people want to see. As a matter of fact, when our highlights do well, we encounter the second stressor, the social media currency. And it's exactly what it sounds like. Just like this dollar coin, the cash in social media is represented by the countless likes, shares, comments, and reacts 
on these on these platforms. And so this economic model isn't exactly conducive to your uh, good mental health because of how everything is constantly competing for your attention. The model makes sense if you're trying to sell a car or a designer handbag. But what troubles me the most is that we are the product being sold here and we are allowing others to attribute value to ourselves. And when one of our posts doesn't get as much attention as we were hoping for, we lose our minds completely. And things don't get any better when these same social media platforms are also being used for the worst of the three stressors, which is online harassment. And if you're on social media and you happen to be a woman, LGBTQ, Muslim, or, or a minority in general, it is very likely that things are much worse for you. One hateful comment or just one leaked private photo of someone might not seem that big of a deal uh, from a bystander's perspective, but it's big enough of a deal for the victim to not want to live anymore. But hey, at the end of the day, social media platforms are not going anywhere. And I'm not going to tell you to stop using them because quite frankly, they're not making people share hateful content. When talking about the ill effects of social media, all we're really talking about is the bad side of people who are solely on these platforms to promote violence, harassment, and create more insecurities. So it all starts with you. The first step is to create a better online presence and be more aware of your environment. Unfollow all the people that you think are toxic for you and make you feel insecure. Find people that spread positivity and surround yourself with people who can make a positive impact in your life. And definitely don't start a passive aggressive status war with your friend from school. Don't ask how I know. It's definitely not a brave move to leave something in the comment section that you would never say to them in person. Therefore, all in all, social media is just a tool like any other, and if we carefully audit our social media diet, it would certainly help us grow together as a society. As long as we're plugged into the internet, it'll affect our lives. Just like how it's important to unplug electronics you aren't using, sometimes unplugging from the internet is the most important thing you can do. And as always, thanks for watching.